Hello, and welcome to another episode of The A Very Abridged Life Of. This week we'll be taking on Mary Shelley. Mary Shelley's life began with the tragic death of her mother, Mary Wollstonecraft, an English writer, philosopher, and an advocate of women's rights. Wollstonecraft was a woman before her time espousing feminist notions. She and William Godwin, also a writer and philosopher, married to give their unborn child legitimacy, though neither believed in the institution of marriage. Mary Shelley was born just five months after her parents married, an enormous scandal at the time, as it was also revealed that Wollstonecraft had not been married to her previous partner, Gilbert Imlay, with whom she also had a child. Mary Shelley grew up alongside this half-sister, Fanny Imlay, who Godwin adopted, and then two further half-siblings after he remarried to Mary Jane Claremont. Mary didn't get along with her stepmother and was even at one point sent away to Scotland for two years. She received no formal education growing up, but she read prodigiously, including her late mother's work. Her father would host parties for many intellectuals, and that was where 15-year-old Mary met Percy Bysshe Shelley. Shelley was one of the major English Romantic poets, widely regarded as one of the greatest lyric and philosophical poets in the English language. Their relationship did not fully develop until two years later, but then things moved very fast. Despite the fact that Percy was six years her senior and was married with one child and another on the way, he and Mary left the continent in July 1814 because Mary herself was pregnant. Shelley's father caught off his allowance, but the couple continued to travel. Over the next two years, Mary and Percy faced ostracism, constant debt, and the death of their prematurely born daughter. But those horrible years also saw the creation of the world's first science fiction novel. Still mourning the death of her child and calling herself Mrs. Shelley, Mary arrived at Lake Geneva to spend the summer in the company of like-minded young people, including the infamous Lord Byron. It was a dreary summer, and the group often read ghost stories for entertainment. Byron challenged everyone to write their own creepy gothic story, making it a contest. Despite the presence of two great poets, the only one to really finish this assignment was Mary. The story she wrote through those damp, sorrowful days resulted in Frankenstein. Shelley described the idea as coming to her on a sleepless night. I saw the pale student of unhallowed arts kneeling beside the thing he had put together. I saw the hideous phantasm of a man stretched out, and then on working some powerful engine, show signs of life and stir with uneasy, half-vital motion. Frightful must it be, for supremely frightful would be the effect of any human endeavor to mock the stupendous mechanism of the creator of the world. The first edition of Frankenstein was published anonymously in early 1818. It wasn't until the second edition came out in 1823 that her name was attached to the work. In November 1816, after that momentous summer, Percy and Mary returned to England, where a series of tragedies met them. A month after the suicide of Fanny, Mary's beloved half-sister, Percy's wife Harriet also killed herself. The couple married on December 30, 1816, to strengthen Percy's custody case for his two children with Harriet, but her family fought hard against him, and in the end he was found morally unfit by the court. Pregnant again, Mary had to follow Percy as they fled England to escape their creditors. They met up with Byron and spent several years traveling around Italy. During this time, Mary lost another two children before finally giving birth to Percy Florence in 1819, their only child to survive into adulthood. Despite struggling with depression, Mary continued writing another novel and two plays, none of which were destined to reach the heights of Frankenstein. In the summer of 1822, Mary miscarried yet again and while Percy saved her life with an impromptu ice bath, his tender affections were given over to another woman traveling with them. It was under this dark cloud that Percy went out to sail with a friend and drowned. By local law, the bodies were cremated, and Mary couldn't bring herself to attend the funeral on the beach, but her friends brought her back the remains of Percy's heart, and she kept them until the day she died. At age 25, Mary was already the author of a hit novel, a widow, and a mother in mourning several times over. She was also determined to live only by what she could make herself. 
Her father-in-law reluctantly gave her a small annual allowance that was mostly intended for her son, who went on to be his heir. They lived on very little and were often shunned by society. Mary labored over Percy's work, but was unable to publish anything biographical or risk losing the money her father-in-law provided. She continued to write novels and short stories for ladies' magazines. She did get to rub elbows with the famous on occasion, like the American actor John Howard Payne and the writer Washington Irving. Payne fell in love with her and in 1826 asked her to marry him, but she refused, saying that after being married to one genius, she could only marry another. He accepted the rejection and then tried to talk his friend Irving into proposing himself. It wasn't until the summer of 1838 that the publisher of Tennyson proposed in publishing a collected work of Percy Shelley. Mary was paid to edit the poetical works, but was told it shouldn't include a biography. She found a way to tell the story of Percy's life nonetheless. She included extensive biographical notes about the poems. Mary Shelley's first concern during these years was the welfare of Percy Florence. She saw to it that her son received a good education, he was devoted to his mother, and even after marriage in 1848 to Jane Gibson St. John, she lived with him and accompanied them on their travels abroad. By all accounts, Mary and Jane were very fond of each other. On February 1, 1851, Shelley died at the age of 53 from what her physician suspected was a brain tumor. According to Jane Shelley, Mary had been asked to be buried with her mother and father, but Percy and Jane judged the graveyard to be dreadful and chose to bury her instead at St. Peter's Church, Bournemouth, near their new home. On the first anniversary of Mary Shelley's death, the Shelleys opened her box desk. Inside, they found locks of her dead children's hair, a notebook that she had shared with Percy by Shelley, and a copy of his poem, Adonis, with one page folded around a silk parcel containing some of his ashes and the remains of his heart. This has been another The Very Abridged Life Of. If there's an author you'd like to request next, put it in the comments below. Until next time, I'm Veronica Reynolds, and thank you for listening.